If you're applying to data analyst roles with zero experience and wondering why you're getting ghosted, this video is for you. There's a better first step and almost nobody is talking about it. You see, there's a group of data jobs that are way easier to land and still get you into the data world fast. In this video, I'll show you what these roles are and why they're worth your time. If you're new here, hi, my name is Avery Smith. I'm a senior data analyst and I help people land their first data job. If you're into data or want to break into the data field, go ahead and hit subscribe because you don't want to miss any of the future episodes. I probably don't need to tell you this if you're listening to this episode, but data roles like data analyst, data scientist, data engineer, business analyst, they're amazing. They're fun, they're flexible, they're financially rewarding, but they're also extremely hard to land. In today's economy, data analyst roles are quite competitive. It almost feels like most roles are asking for a bachelor's degree, if not a master's degree, three to five years of experience and like 37 different data tools. I mean, it's no secret that entry-level data jobs aren't even entry-level anymore. And if they are, they don't even exist. Plus, a lot of data analyst roles are getting 500, 700, 1,000 different applicants in just a week. So if you're brand new to data with no prior experience, with no sort of degree to back it up, and you're trying to break into the data field, how the heck are you supposed to stand out? Honestly, it can often feel like you're just throwing your resume into outer space and praying for an absolute miracle that someone's going to hire you. And that's not fun at all. But here's the truth. You don't need to land a full data analyst role to start your data career. Now don't get me wrong, I love data analyst roles, but for many beginners, it's actually not the best starting point. And there are some roles that you should look into instead. So here are six overlooked data titles that are much more entry level friendly than data analyst. Number one, data specialist. Number two, data clerk. Number three, data coordinator. Number four, data steward. Number five, data assistant. And number six, data entry. And now let me give you seven reasons I think these jobs are actually pretty amazing and why you should be considering them instead of a full data analyst job. Number one, these roles are often more domain focused. And what I like about that is I call them kind of stepping stone jobs, meaning they're half a data analyst role and half another role. And a lot of the times you are coming from a different domain, a different education, a different whole industry, right? And so if you can find one of these stepping stone jobs, one of these six titles that I talked about earlier, that's half data analyst and half your domain, you're going to one, be a lot better fit for that role. You're going to have a better chance of landing that role because your prior experience or your prior education is going to be applicable and exciting to hiring managers and recruiters. And also once you get into that role, you're not going to be completely lost because you've done something similar in the past. So to make this more tangible, one of the best examples of this is the education world. A lot of the people who enroll in my accelerator bootcamp are former teachers or teachers who are transitioning. And all of the times they're able to find data specialist roles in their school district. So it's half about being a teacher in education and just knowing how the school system works, making reports in Excel or other data related activities. So a lot of the times these roles are going to be more tangible and more in reach for you and your current domain, which I think is great if you're transitioning into the field. Which brings me to point number two, which is these roles are easier to qualify for. Not only because they're going to be like more involved in your domain potentially, but also a lot of the times the only like hard technical skill they require is Excel, which is is very useful in the data world, but also easy to learn. A lot of the times you've already been using Excel at your job or you used it in the past in school or something. And so picking up Excel for data analytics is not really that difficult. It's something that you can learn in like a month or so. Now, if these jobs only required Python, that's gonna take you longer, like six months to learn. But Excel, you can learn most of Excel for data analysis pretty quickly. In addition to this, there is often easier or lower education requirements. So a lot of data jobs will require a bachelor's or maybe some will require a master's degree degree, some of these roles only require a high school GED or the equivalent. So basically, if you graduated high school, if you did maybe an associate's degree in college, these roles might be a great fit for you because you're going to check the box on the education requirement. And some of the data analyst jobs, you know, they're going to require you to have a full bachelor's degree. These ones, not as quite as a requirement. So if you don't have a college degree, these might be great roles for you to look into. Number three, these jobs are less competitive. There are less people applying 
applying to these jobs than data analyst roles. Because if you're watching this and you're thinking, man, I've never even heard of these roles or I've never thought about these roles, then you are not alone. There is lots of people who have never heard or thought about these roles. And because of that, they're not applying to those roles. I've never really heard anyone talk about this except for me. And so if people aren't talking about it, then people don't know about it. And if people don't know about it, people aren't applying to these roles. So if you are consuming this episode right now, you are an early adopter. And if you start applying for these roles, you're going to see the applicants on these aren't going to be crazy. So act now before everyone starts applying to these roles. Now, I think these roles are less competitive because people haven't really heard of them or thought about them much. But also, let's be honest, they're not exactly glamorous. They're not like the really cool sexiness of data science and data analytics. They're a little bit more, I don't want to say blue collar because they're not blue collar, but they're a little bit more mainstream and maybe not as glamorous as the traditional data jobs are. So if you're okay having maybe a less glamorous title just to start your career, this is just your first data job, then this might be a good option for you. Number four, they still give you real data experience. These are analysis jobs. Just because they don't have the word an analyst or analytics or analysis in them doesn't mean that you won't be analyzing data. You're going to be analyzing data. As much as a data analyst, maybe not, maybe only 50% of the time, but that's still going to be analyzing data, which is a lot closer to being a data analyst than whatever role you have now, probably. For instance, if you are a chiropractor, you're probably not analyzing a ton of data, but in this role, you possibly would be doing it half the time. So that is a good step in the right direction. Also, having any term of data in your titles is going to help you with your LinkedIn and your resume because the ATS algorithm and the LinkedIn algorithm are heavily biased because they want people who are already data analysts, who already have data experience, for any data job that gets posted. So when you go to apply to a data analyst role in the future, you're going to have the word data on your resume multiple different places, same with your LinkedIn. That's going to help your candidacy look a lot better and you're going to get more hits from recruiters and the ATS. So getting one of these roles is going to look really good on your LinkedIn and on your resume and it's a step in the right direction. Number five, these roles are often remote or hybrid. And I probably don't have to tell you how awesome it is to work remotely or to work hybrid. I've been working remote for the last five years and it's absolutely amazing. My Commute time is like literally 25 seconds into my office. And that means I can spend more time working or I can spend more time doing my hobbies or more time with my family. I have a lot of students who join my program and they're commuting one way, one hour. So like two hours round trip a day. Imagine if I gave you back two hours in your day, how much more time would you have to spend with your family or do something fun or study data analytics so you could ultimately become a data analyst. And so one of the things that we teach inside of the accelerator program, which is my bootcamp, is in module one, if you're tight on time, especially if you're commuting a lot. We have one student right now who is literally commuting four hours a day, which is absolutely bonkers. Can we get you into a specialist role, one of these roles we talked about earlier, and just save you time? Let's just keep your money the same where it's at, but we're going to give you literally one sixth of your day back which is absolutely amazing. So these roles are often remote or hybrid. And if you're working in person right now and you wanna work in a data role in a remote or hybrid standpoint, this can be a quick and easy way to get there. So these roles would be a good option for you. Number six, these roles set you up for what I call an internal pivot. And an internal pivot is actually the easiest way to land a data job in my opinion. That's actually how I became a data analyst. And what an internal pivot means is you become a data analyst at the current company you work for. So for instance, I was a chemical lab technician. I was not analyzing data. I was mixing beakers and chemicals and wearing goggles and the white coat and everything. And I ultimately became a data analyst at that company. And I didn't have to change companies or even change industries to become a data analyst. And the reason that this internal pivot is the easiest way to actually land a data role is because those people already know, like, and trust you. You don't have to convince them that you're cool and that you have what it takes to be productive as an employee. They already know that. There's low risk for them. And a lot of the times these companies that are hiring these, you know, different roles we talked about earlier, like a data specialist, they hire data analysts too. And so if you can start in a company that has data specialists, they probably have data analysts too. And the transition from specialist to analyst is really not all that complicated. You don't have to know all that much more. And a lot of the times that's like a proven roadmap that's a proven track that people have done at that company. So it's not completely out of the box. So this is a great way to get your foot in the door and pivot internally into a data analyst role. And number seven, the pay is decent. I won't say it's anything amazing and it's definitely a step below a data analyst salary. A lot of the times these roles might be 20 to $35 an hour, which equates to about 40 to $70,000 per year. So I know that's nothing like absolutely crazy and it seems like it's getting harder and harder to pay for things. But a lot of the times this could be a small upgrade or at least keeping your salary 
salary about what it's been for people who want to transition into data analytics. So if I told you, hey, you have a chance to get your foot in the data door and you are going to keep your salary the same and maybe you have a chance to work remotely or hybrid, would you take it? If the answer is yes, then this role is for you. So there you have it. These entry-level data jobs are less competitive, offer a great leg into the data world that will allow you to get paid to learn in the position and eventually become a data analyst and grow from there. This is amazing and it's one of the reasons I teach about these roles in module one of my data analyst bootcamp, the Data Analytics Accelerator. My suggestion is to start looking at job descriptions for these six different roles I listed earlier and to start applying to some of those roles. You can find these roles on your normal websites like Indeed or LinkedIn. But if you want to find some specific ones, I try to include some on finddatajob.com every single day. I even have a special category for them that you can click to check them out. It's called data specialists. Now, I hope you enjoyed this episode and learned a lot about these different data roles. What questions do you have for me? Put them in the comments down below and I'll try to answer them or make another video to answer them.